Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome to another reaction. So, this is one that I've been looking forward to for a little while, simply because of who made it. This is Half-Life 2 VR is an absolute nightmare, this is why, by Up Is Not Jump. I've been a fan of Up Is Not Jump for a while, and I've been wanting to do a reaction to his stuff, again, for a while, but the problem is, he's been a guy that I've been watching for again, a while, to the point where I don't have anything that I of his that I haven't watched, so I don't want to have to do, you know, a fake reaction to his stuff. So, thankfully, yesterday, he, he released this. What he does, he does sort of like comedic essay sort of style sort of videos. Um, he's done ones on like all the Fallout games. Uh, he's also done them on like actual global warming. It's very hard for me to explain what he's done if you haven't seen him before. So, hey, without further ado, let's actually get into this, shall we? Me and Emma dyed our hair, and now we both accidentally look like Team Rocket. Pose, pose, pose. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool, I guess. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> Rise and shine, Mr. Jump. Rise. Shine. Oh no. Not that I wish to imply you've been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest. And all the effort in the world would have gone to waste. Well, this is actually really until... well done. As... Well, let's just say your hours come again. Oh, okay, cut it off. Oh, 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 I was having this awful dream where the world was being run by this evil group of dictators that controlled our every action while also needlessly destroying the planet, all for their own personal gain. Half-Life 2, eh? Released in 1974 by everyone's favourite game developer, Fawcett, it pushed the boundaries in what we believed card-based games could do. No, not really. Half Wait a second. first-person shooter where you play as Gordon Freeman, a big science nerd who is into theoretical physics and bashing out brains with a crowbar. Speaking yeah, that sounds about right. I thought I'd dress up a little bit. And... I thought things could use a little bit more life. As a youth, I didn't play Half-Life 1 or 2, so I don't really have any nostalgia for this series. He even- do think Okay, wait, can I just say something about that? I, I can completely understand, you know, people not playing a game or stuff like that. You know, it's free choice and, you know, it's not like the end of the world or anything. But the number of people I, I've got commenting on my Half-Life Zero Viscosity video talking about how I'm one of the only people or the literally the only person that's act, that currently done a reaction to this that has any idea about the lore of Half Life is astonishing. It's, it's it's like last I checked, there were four people that have reacted to this. I'm one of them, and I'm the only one that has any idea about the lore, and the only one that has like any experience with it before. It's nuts. Yeah. Um. Also, a bit of a surprise to me, I got a comment on that video by Carl the Deranged. So if you don't know who he is, uh, he was one of the animators and like one of the longest team members on Alpha Boost's team. Uh, I'm sorry I went off track for, uh, with that. Uh, let's continue back with Up Is Not Jump, the actual topic of this reaction. I think they're very good though, okay? You can drop the pitchforks. But since these games are most famous for pushing the boundaries of what was possible at the time, if you play them today, you've missed the pushing of the boundaries, and all <laughs> you have to document that they've moved are the skid marks on the floor. I mean, rave all you like about how revolutionary the Beatles were. Listen to them nowadays, and it sounds like someone's bashing a tambourine in one ear and talking in reverse in the other. <laughs> I actually do like the Beatles too, so again, drop the forks. But what makes this series yeah. true I never liked the, is how the Beatles. perfectly its story is told. And quality storytelling, oh, it ages like a fine wine. Yeah. In Half-Life 1, a dimensional rift opens and the base you are in is subjected to a cavalcade of kooky critters. The intrigue that pulls the story along, though, is not only where these monsters came from and who sent them, but their fabulous morphology. We have psychic powers, unique ways of hunting, transformative effects, and a near-illegal similarity to the creatures from Abe's Odyssey. Now, I'm not saying that anyone Wait, which came out first? sued because of this, but something does need to be done. 
I at least deserve some money for pointing it out. In Half-Life 2, said invasions have gone a bit further and a full takeover of Earth is now happening by a much more calculating group called the Combine. The story here, though, is even more ripe and juicy. Yeah. Because sure, the Combine are taking over Earth, but... Who are they? They weren't in the first game. Did they come through the rift later? And these aren't aliens. These are humans who have been changed in some way to fit the Combine's needs. But what did the Combine do to them? And how did they... Oh, yes, and you see you're in. Let me at this game. I have to finish it. See, what Valve have done is build a world with all this information already worked out. But the goal of the game isn't to convey this information to you. This isn't fucking Star Wars. Master, sir. I heard Yoda talking about midichlorians. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? Seriously, this dialogue is so bad, it sounds like it's coming from a Fallout 4 conversation choice. The factions in Half-Life 2 have their past and motives, but they don't outright tell you what they are. They're too busy getting on with things, and it makes for an incredibly convincing story. It's more the Game of Thrones style before the Season 8 cataclysm. You know, yeah. Littlefinger would never have just told Bran that he was planning on double-crossing Bane. It would have just confused things! <laughs> Where's the VR getting into this? Guess we're here! So, some incredible modders who are all smarter, more talented, and just generally better humans than me took Half-Life 2 and made it run in VR. And the quality of this free mod is a lot better than some other first-person poopy VR games that are poopy, poopy, poop. So making games that work really well in VR is an absolute nightmare because the experience is so full-on that any minor issues become glaringly obvious. Show uh -oh. them what it's like, live-action past me. <laughs> Thank you, me from the past. It is also <laughs> very important to note that this game is still in its beta. So any issues I'm going to talk about have most likely been fixed in the seven years it took me to edit this video together. I mean, look, it's Gordon Freeman riding a unicycle. This shit takes time. Wait, so you recorded some of this footage seven years ago? And so I am going to focus a lot on the negatives about this game like I usually do. But this is one of the best VR games out there. So take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt. And so I've split this uh. nightmarish endeavor into three things that VR developers basically need to get perfect or it causes big issues. One, smoothness and crispness. This is all about how the game looks in VR, so obviously it's very important. And the standout feature of this mod is how smooth the frame rate is and how crisp the visuals are. I'm happy to say that it's all basically perfect. It really feels like you're there. What, me? But I'm, oh wait, no, no, it's okay. I can do this. Picking this up is gonna be even easier with motion controls. Ha <laughs> it's my can now. Oh no, he's after me. <laughs> uh, uh, two. Combat stuff. This game has a lot of guns, but all the aiming and shooting has been programmed into this mod perfectly. The Magnum is Poifically? like the hand of God reaching oh, down and decimating beautiful. your enemies. How's it going? I love this game. And when you fire the <laughs> rocket launcher with this mod, you control its trajectory midair with your arm, and yet I've never missed once. <laughs> I'm a pro games player. Oh no. <laughs> uh, the weapons that you have to hold with two hands are... Uh, <laughs> Look, I'm a firm believer that Valve weren't just guessing when they made Alex. They had enough people to invade a small country, so when Ooh. making it, I assume they got together and said... Monaco. We should invade Monaco. <laughs> No, I assume okay. they said two-handed weapons are fun in VR, but they are a little finickety. And so to me, this is why Alex did not have two-handed weapons. What I mean by all this is when using two-handed weapons, you've got to get your second hand to the base of the gun and grab it every time. And I think this is an issue for me because the combat in this game is already quite busy and this is quite a specific action. I have a lot of words here explaining why the okay. combat is so busy, so I'm going to go fast here for this bit. Because well, it was Half designed. VR has 11 different weapons to select from, and all of them are reloaded totally differently. Three of these guns need you to hold them with both hands. There's limited ammo for most guns, so you need to be regularly changing weapons mid fight. You often need to interact with other objects in the environment during fights, and some of the weapons require manual reloading between every shot. The point is, there's already a lot going on during yeah. combat, and throwing two. Mainly because the game was, you know, originally designed for non-VR. Handed weapons into this means I now need to repeatedly and always flawlessly grab a specific point on a gun that doesn't even exist while thinking about a dozen other things. And so I'm going to miss sometimes. And when I do, I won't know until I see that the gun won't fire. And... 
But it's annoying, isn't it? Remember that scene in Terminator where she reloads the gun with one hand? Can you, can we, can we do, can we do that? Three, interacting with the world. <laughs> okay. A lot of perfect scores. A lot of people to make unreasonably angry. So, picking up objects with your hand or your gravity gun and placing them is a delight. It's perfect. Okay. We're on cloud nine. Should we go out for dinner? Uh. The general grab controls in this game make me want to jump into that hell portal from Doom, which I've been playing lately and it's really good. The way the controls in this game are set up, for the index at least, meant I kept grabbing literally everything around me as I walked. Oh. I'd look to my left and inevitably I'd be holding Oh, oh, Gordon, really? You don't know where that's been. Put, put that down. What? Ugh. Seriously, I accidentally grab everything in sight. Wheels, fuel cans, shipping pallets, another wheel. At random times, <laughs> I'd find I was shaking around like a mad person because I hadn't realized I was actually holding another explosive flaming barrel. Oh, fuck. Oh, See, no. if I'm standing near anything, and you know, technically everything is anything, so yeah. I'm always standing near Something. anything. And my hand even touches whispers this part of the controller, it will activate the grab sensor and a plastic chair a full meter behind me will suddenly fly into view. And it is that <laughs> sensitive. Even a, a faint kiss will do it. <sighs> Oh, oh. <laughs> now this really is just a small <laughs> controls issue causing a pretty big problem. And I can think of a few ways to fix these issues. I do imagine the demigods who made this mod have already tried these, but let's discuss them anyway. <sighs> Will do. Oh, when playing Half-Life Alex on the index, <laughs> you gotta love bloopers. the grab sensor, it doesn't grab far away items. Do this. Make Half-Life VR light. Try this. See, in Alex, you actually use the trigger buttons to pull stuff over that's far away. Only when something is very, very close can you squeeze the controller to hold it. Now, this prevents accidental squeezes from ruining your day. And oh yeah. boy, am I not even gonna touch that one. Let's move on. A much more difficult and depressing thing for the modders to do. Again, there were Working for free, they don't owe us any of this. The mod is great. Would be yeah. bad directional grabbing. In Half-Life 2 VR, your hand can grab absolutely anything within a one meter sphere around it, even if you aren't pointing at it. What are you looking at? So you can put your hand on and you'll grab anything. Some pills from the right, a monitor from the left. This thing. But in Alex, your hands have a directional line of sight to the world. That is, when you point at something, it becomes selected, and that is all you can grab. And this is particularly useful because it prevents unwanted squeezes. What did I tell you? This may also <laughs> explain why I kept not grabbing the end of my shotgun and would instead grab this, uh, large recycling bin. Put it. Put it down. Put it. Put the bin down. Outside of this, <laughs> manipulating objects in the world is pretty perfect. The other controls are all really smooth and intuitive. Changing weapons is fun. Moving and jumping works well. Seriously, this mod is great, and you should all play it. It's just that this object grabbing thing really pulled me out of the game. I mean, I kept oh, no. accidentally grabbing stuff from the gravity gun. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't really want this either. <laughs> Half-Life 2 itself is genuinely pretty good. I know, who'd have thought it? To be honest with you, I first played it in 2008, about four years after it came out, and I was a little disappointed. Oh, yep, here come the forks again. See, by this point, I'd already played Modern Warfare 4 and Halo 3. Huge sprawling battles, intense vehicle sections, a revolutionary new way to involve the protagonist in a first-person shooter to this. Oh no, oh no, oh no, this is not an easy transition. <laughs> I was told by everyone this was and remains to be possibly the greatest game ever made, but how? How is this possible? Well, let's investigate. So the game opens up. The right man in the wrong. Oh, here's place the rest of it. Can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Jump. Wake up and smell the ashes. <laughs> the game begins with you arriving in a city controlled by evil alien overlords, and you make contact with a secret underground resistance. And As you do. You, you realize that this game is brimming with life. Interesting characters and set pieces, locations plastered with fine details and engaging technology to interact with. I mean, the very fate of mankind is being discussed here, and you can instead focus your time on teleporting this cactus. You see, what people <laughs> don't realize is teleporting I think there's an achievement for that, isn't there? It's actually pretty easy. All you've got to do is focus your attention and then... 
Uh -oh. What's happened to my cactus? The game throws so much at you in its opening hour that you can barely see it all the first time through. There are so many moving parts and ideas, it's all great. The combat, though a little dated, also ramps up perfectly as the game goes on. So you aren't just being given bigger and better weapons as you travel through. The locations and the enemies are always changing to perfectly reflect the latest weaponry you've been given. It's a little so bit fun. like how Zelda dungeons always give you the item you need for the boss just minutes before you meet them. Okay, so I got a boomerang and yeah, very clearly it can cut ropes. That's good. Oh look, it's the boss. I wonder how I will ever beat this rope-based enemy. Yeah, sure, perfect. <laughs> that seems right. You start with only a melee weapon, which allows you to take on a few guards and destroy some physics objects. Then as you get a pistol and a machine gun, even larger groups of enemies show up. The zombie section gives you a shotgun. The section at the beach gives you a weapon, which literally lets you storm the beaches. And by the end, you're taking on the whole citadel, which has loomed over you the entire game, and you get to use the full arsenal you've collected over the game to do so. It's all just so oh, slick. Brings back <laughs> memories. Organic. Anyway, oh, so no. you meet the resistance, get separated from the resistance, meet the resistance again, and get separated from the resistance again. again. I didn't realize this, but over half the game's story is just you trying to actually reach the resistance so you can finally touch Eli's tempting face. Oh no, he's being <laughs> taken away again. <sighs> In another life, my darling. Okay, so like I said, you get separated from the resistance again. And rather than squeezing through this very large gap, Alex says, Take Gordon to the Raven home tunnel, then circle around and try to meet up with me. Whoa, whoa, Alex, I've only known you for all of five minutes, and I only really remember one thing you've said. Raven home. We don't go there anymore. I'm getting mixed messages, <laughs> lady! Speaking of which, there is a slight romance being suggested between us and Alex. There's nothing Gordon can't handle, with the possible exception of you. Dad, please. Uh, Wait, what? What was that? Uh, Eli, are you okay? <laughs> you got to me, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't go anywhere for three obvious reasons. One, Gordon categorically refuses to ever speak to Alex. Man, a few words, aren't you? Two, Alex only walks uh, backwards if you are. Uh... If you know what I mean. No, literally, she keeps walking backwards for some reason. No one's gonna be into this, Alex. You're coming on too strong. And three, and most importantly, God I uh, I still love. Oh, I love the fact that um, Freeman's mind is being continued into Half Life Two. I uh, just I love it. I mean, of course, the episodes are coming out slow, but you know. Oh God, I could again. I can't do a reaction to this because I've already watched all the episodes up to this point. Ah! Gordon obviously only has eyes for Barney. About that beer I owed you. So I get to Ravenholm and I don't know what Alex was talking about. Airbnb, anyone? So in VR, this location is good. Good. You see, Ravenholm is a zombie-filled town of terrifying death, and in non-VR is probably one of the best bits of Half-Life 2. It's really atmospheric and filled with loads of interesting set pieces that I really can't show you. But in VR, this area is let down a little, mainly because if the absolutely terrifying xenomorph fuckers that occupy this town do get into your face, they don't seem to cause a reaction in VR at all. I don't get a red screen or get knocked back, and it's usually the same with all of the head crabs. So the threat I felt from these enemies was quickly reduced quite a bit. Oh, but there's what? also the section where you need to harness an army of sand monsters to storm a prison, and this whole section is far and away a hundred times better in VR. You attack the prison by chucking this plump ball of I forget, it was, it was pheromones. This causes the sand monsters to completely overwhelm the combined forces, and seeing this all in 3D is nothing short of amazing. It's just really fun having this army of friendly giants gathering around you. Really, all Almost all of these sorts of segments in Half-Life 2 are vastly better in VR. Getting teleported, jumping on trains, the walls closing in around you, being carried around the citadel, marveling as spaceships and striders travel about above you. <laughs> it's like all these major segments in Half-Life 2 were made for VR, and the, the the vehicle parts. Well, we don't we don't need to talk about um uh. The vehicle we parts in this game are completely unplayable in VR. There, I said it. I'm sorry, everyone, but we must have different organs or something because mine completely rejected this part. Now, if I were to give a positive review of these parts, I would say that I didn't quite throw up. Now, there's a review that you can put on the front cover. <laughs> I'd like to make it clear that this isn't a criticism of the VR mod at all, though. These driving sections have been modded into VR really well. The general movement, the controls, the shooting while driving, the jumps, the spinning in midair, the flipping upside down as you drop. Oh. 
Uh, uh, wait, wait, a bucket? Something's coming back to me. That's it. I know how to get through these driving parts without getting sick. It's so genius, it has to work. Wait a minute. Yeah! We're racing now, boys! <laughs> Ah! Seriously, just recording these bits made me so unwell. Vehicle sections in VR are always going to feel a bit weird as the world flies past you at 100 miles an hour <laughs> while you're standing completely still. But these sections in Half-Life 2 weren't originally designed with VR in mind at all. Of course, yeah. So rather than just being straightforward driving sections, they're filled with puzzles, dead ends, open sections where you have to constantly rotate 180 degrees to work out where you're... Where... Oh. Seriously though, if you really need to skip these sections, all you have to do is open the command console and type in this to skip the hoverboat and this to skip the buggy section. Maybe in the future this mod could include an official option to do this. You know, something along the lines of this section may cause unwanted organ removal for players. <laughs> do you wish to skip? Well, it's a bit late for that now, isn't it? Oh, hey, yep. I'm dying. Now, if you don't want to skip these vehicle sections entirely, because they are really fun, but you know you just can't handle the nausea, I do have one last sensible workaround. Oh no, what is oh, it? Oh yeah, here we go. You can't get sick when there's two players. Right, Martha? Martha? Are you okay? <laughs> She's dead! So as you can tell from all of this, I now quite like Half-Life 2. The storytelling and the world that Valve have put together still hold up incredibly well. But what's so good about the VR mod specifically is it takes the combat, which for me is probably the most dated part of the experience, and adds motion controls and full 3D support to it, now making it pretty much the most advanced part of the game. This all together really <laughs> makes Half-Life 2 VR, to me at least, a somewhat timeless classic. The only major thing that I think really needs changing is the fact that I grab every piece of furniture in a room as I walk through it. And so that's Half-Life <laughs> 2 VR. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. <sighs> mm. Oh, so good. So good. I... I mean, it was just—it was just a good video. I like watching his stuff. I like why I like seeing why things he does are nightmares. Uh, it just—I—I I literally have nothing else to say to this. So, um, if you like this, leave a like. Subscribe if you have not. The original will obviously be in the description. Uh, check out my Patreon. All that stuff you know every YouTuber tells you to do or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.